Hello, I wanted to make a video to explain some of the usage of this motor mixing calculator that I made for calculating multi-rotor mixings. Um, it's only for flat motor configurations, so it won't work for tricopters or um, for V-tail layouts or anything like that. But the idea is you <coughs> set up your layout like this, and at the bottom of the screen we have some outputs which show you for at least clean flight and multi we what the uh, commands you'll need to have to make this layout work are going to be and you can see they're updating like that in real time as I move the motors around um, <clears throat> so the idea of this is to try and make things easy because I've seen a few methods for calculating mixings out there and they usually involve some sort of trigonometry or measuring of angles which is, well, measuring of angles is a little bit awkward and trigonometry is kind of a chore to uh, to calculate and stuff. But it is possible to figure this out simply by measuring the distances between the motors. Um, so that's what we have here. And all you'll need to do is first lay out how many motors you have in the general um, layout like that. And then you can just go around and measure each of the important distances and you don't have to measure all of the distances so generally for a quad layout you need to measure five distances um, and then you'll also need to specify at least one set of motors that are either horizontally aligned or vertically aligned um, <clears throat> so when you first look at this page you'll see that there are four motors here I figure maybe a quadcopter is probably the most common um, number of motors and to just give it, give yourself an idea of what the settings are here that you have to enter you can click on one of these links so if I click on ZMR250 we'll see a bunch of constraints have been entered in this uh, section here and if we there's some um, some information down here but we'll just quickly look at the constraints here constraints so this is saying that motors 1 and 2 are separated by a distance of 156 in this case I'm using millimeters as my units doesn't matter what units you use as long as you use the same units for every uh, measurement of course uh, and then motors 3 and 4 are separated by a distance of 156 as well so if I just get rid of those we'll see that now we have only those two um, distance constraints in, in here so I can shuffle these around and they'll sort of squidge back into the right um, distance after a moment so when you do this you'll have to just let it run for a bit to um, have these numbers at the bottom finish updating so they're updating all the time but it should be after three or four seconds they'll stop and then you'll have this um, values that you can you paste into your CLI um, so yeah when you add something to this text box here um, it will wait for you to finish typing and then after two seconds when there's been no action it will update so let's let's say that motors one and three are going to be 200 millimeters apart okay so that will be like that and then we could say that motors two and four are also 200 millimeters apart so that should give me a nice rectangle but it doesn't because I haven't um, I haven't given any diagonal constraints and uh, let's see what was the let me just let me just refresh this just take out the diagonal constraints so you can see that without the diagonal constraints we can make a parallelogram like that so if I put the diagonal constraints back in then we have a nice rectangle except now I've left out the horizontal constraints so this <laughs> using this mixing using these results here is going to be trouble so you also need to say that at least one set of motors is either horizontally or vertically aligned so in this case I'll just say that motors 4 and 2 oops, are horizontally aligned and that will take a bit of time to settle out but it should make the overall structure 
horizontally al aligned as well. Um, to make it, things a bit quicker, you can use more constraints. So if I had also had one and three as a horizontal constraint, that would have made things a bit quicker. Um, all right, so that's how things would work for a quadcopter. You don't have to do much more than open the page up and type some constraints into here. Or maybe you can just click one of these and just use um, overwrite the numbers that I have in here for the distances is probably going to be good enough. <clears throat> these ones here are just some frames that either I have available to measure or I found this one on the net which had some measurements. Um, so you could yeah, start with one of these. But if you have a hexacopter or an octocopter or something with more motors than that, uh, let's have a look at how you can just re reload the page. How you can um, set up different motors, numbers of motors. Uh, so if you bring the mouse over here, you'll see, uh, as I've been doing so far, you can drag the motors around. Uh, if you drag them when they're connected to something, you can sort of make the size of the whole thing different. The overall result of the mixing should be exactly the same. It doesn't matter what size they are. Um, it doesn't matter what size this display is, that is. Uh, you'll find that when you drag a motor way, way out to the side, it, uh, it reaches like a limit. There's a sort of an invisible wall here that it can't go past. And when you keep trying to pull it out of this area, the other motors will squeeze down to um, make sure that the overall uh, the overall layout is not going outside of this invisible boundary just inside the outside of the canvas uh, anyway so all right so once you've um, first thing you need to do is click on this canvas you can see at least in Chrome you can see when I click on it I get a gray outline around the outside so now my keyboard is going to be responding to key presses in here um, so I'm just going to delete some of these motors by hitting either the D key or the delete key also so I can um, actually get rid of all of them maybe yeah now to add a motor you'll see the um, instructions up here you can either add what a hit the left or right arrow key to add a motor um, so if I hit the left arrow key here you'll see it adds a motor which goes has the arrow going left at the top like that and if I hit the right arrow key we get one with the motor going right, so that'll be clockwise motor. Uh, so I can just, so if I was doing a hex, I would have something like this maybe, um, two, three, four, five, six, something roughly like that. Uh, no, like this. Yeah. So that would be a hex with the uh, circular numbering. And then once I've got to that point, I can just go start typing in my numbers. So 1 and 2 would be constrained by 200 or whatever. Um, yeah. Hold on a second. 5, 4 and 5. The scale can get a little bit odd. So what we've done here is when we shifted these around... I think I must have dragged one of these to hit the invisible wall and we've scaled the whole thing out quite a lot. So, But once you um, once you get all the numbers in that, that you need, so let's just do this in a circle, 2 and 3, 200, 3 and 4, 200, 5 and 6, 200, and 6 and 1, 200. Well, that still doesn't look too great, does it? What's going on here? I'm not sure why everything wants to go so small. <laughs> Alright, it's not keeping in a um, hexagon because we haven't said the other important points which is the middle uh, like the chords of the circle so in a layout like this you'd also want to make sure that um, 
So the middle would be twice that, wouldn't it? So we'd have one, two, three, four. So motors one and four should be twice as far apart. And motors two and five should be twice as far apart. And what else? Three and six should also be. Okay, well that's a bit of a boring layout, it's just a, a normal hex for which you wouldn't really need to use this mixing calculator because you can just use the mixing calculator, uh, the normal uh, hex 6, uh, 6x rather, flat x is it, whatever. Um, but for non-standard hexacopter layouts you would want to have something like this calculator would be much more useful. So I'll also add in this case we want motors 5 and 2 to be vertically aligned, say. So that will give us the the, the global alignment, so to speak. Um, anyway, so now we can see we've got six motors down here to use. Um, you'll notice that when a motor it has less than three constraints attached to it, the motor will go red or the little dot behind the motor will go red and in this case it's probably not a big deal to not have that but just keep in mind that when there's less than three constraints there's actually two positions that these these remaining two constraints could have that motor so they could have it here or they could also push it here yeah and it's quite sloppy if you don't have three constraints so to put those back in is kind of necessary to get a fully constrained position. Anyway, I think I've talked quite enough about this. It's not really that complex. Um, and I think once you just fire up the web page and give it a try, you'll see exactly how to use it. And it's not, not really that difficult at all. Um, so I'm going to be maintaining this mixer at this URL here. Um, there has been a little bit of discussion in the CleanFlight IRC channel about putting this into one of the tabs of the CleanFlight configurator, so you may perhaps see that happening at some point in the future. I'm not probably not going to be doing that myself because I don't understand completely how all the stuff in the CleanFlight configurator works, and also because I feel that um, this is useful for things other than CleanFlight as well, obviously multi-Wii and perhaps even like APM or some of the other flight controllers as well. Um, but the trouble is, once you, if it was only in clean flight, for example, the way you would use it at the moment is you can, it's a simple copy and paste to get this into clean flight CLI. So you just paste that there and hit enter. So that's all you need to do. It's not hard to get it into clean flight as it is. Um, so I don't think, um, I'm going to be bothering to, um, put it in there myself. And the other thing is that if it's only in clean flight, you need to connect a clean flight flight controller to the to this configurator before you even get to see these tabs at all. So perhaps it could be put into one of these tabs, maybe. I don't know. It would be more convenient for non clean flight users. So anyway, um, if you want to look for this in the future and know where it's going to be for sure, that's the URL to check. Alright. Anyway, hope this is useful. Thanks for watching. See you later.